it's not I shot the sheriff. It's uh, the sheriff shot the judge. Uh, in this case, Kentucky Sheriff Sean Mickey Steins being charged with the murder of longtime friend and colleague District Judge Kevin Mullins. It's something that shocked this, uh, this small Kentucky community. These two were tight. They were personal friends. They went out for lunch together. Even the very day of the murder, they went out for lunch together. People saw them uh, hanging out all of the time, which is kind of how it works in, in a small community like this. Um, so for the sheriff on camera in the judge's chambers to go from a discussion to pulling out his service revolver and ending the life of the judge, something big had to have happened. And all we know right now as of this recording is that uh, a phone number on the judge's phone seemed to have matched that of the sheriff's daughter. Why was her number on the phone? And I have a hard time believing that that was the only made motivation for him to pull out a gun and shoot the judge. I'm assuming there was more to this story. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. What do you make of this? This is a sheriff who doesn't really have a track record of you know, violent behavior or anything of that nature. Um, really just you know, everyday normal human beings, as we would assume, and from all accounts, healthy, normal human beings. Uh, if you were to analyze that uh, and, and give your conjecture, what would you be saying took place here? It is so weird, you know, and I watched the um, video on the news and YouTube with the actual shooting. And you want to talk somebody who just looked like he he had a very clear agenda. He was going to kill that that judge. And so, yeah. And then the daughter connection, you know, we're trying to decide what was going on with that. And then he made some kind of comment as he was being taken away and arrested about they were trying to kidnap my wife and kid, which is weird. Again, yeah. what is he referring to? So one of the places my mind went, did this guy have a paranoid psychotic break? Yeah. Did he in some way have a, a brain problem where he created this fantasy that something awful was happening and his family was in danger and he became this protector of his family. That certainly crossed my mind. Or is there some kind of secret, you know, trafficking or sex ring going on that the judge was involved in, which would be weird, yeah. you know? There's going to be a movie about that if that yeah. turns out to be the case. Um, but it, definitely, it's hard to come up with something other than those two scenarios for me. I guess what's more likely to have occurred here? I mean, there's we and obviously the, the judge, we don't know what took place, but his yeah. name is being drawn through the mud with the accusations yeah. of, you know, was he was there something going on with his daughter? We don't know. We just don't know the answer to that. And the answer could be no. It could be absolutely mm -hmm. nothing at all. Mm -hmm. um, if his if the daughter's phone number was in the judge's phone, kind of weird. I don't. I mean, it just kind of depends the dynamics. You have to look at the context of it all. Yeah. Was there a reason? Do they have kids that are the same age? You know, sometimes right. parents will have other kids' numbers on their phone to find out where the hell their kids are. Um, yeah. There are logical reasons that are not perverse yeah. or sexual as to why that number could be there. And if one was having some sort of psychotic break and they're looking for the evidence and they yeah. find the number there, that's the evidence. That could be a possibility or there could have been something going on. We just don't know. Uh, so uh, again, I ask you, what's more likely here? Uh, I, uh, that my, first place my brain took me was psychotic break yeah. because of course I've worked so much with psychotic people yeah. and and you can have a person who is not necessarily schizophrenic they're functioning very well in their lives but then something goes wrong at 40 or even into their 50s it's not common but it does happen and they develop these paranoid delusions and they believe them completely and it affects their behavior and they end up in the criminal justice system so that's where my mind took me as i would certainly be looking at him and interviewing very closely to see what is going on in his yeah. thinking pattern and are there abnormal things happening here would it have been a very fast break? Would it have been a, like over lunch, just something clicked weird and wrong, and then the break happened? Or would this likely have been more of a kind of a slow build? One we would have not necessarily yeah. have seen. Maybe the judge was kind of like, what's going on with my buddy over here? Like, he's kind of acting weird. You know, it, it yeah. slowly, insidiously happens. Is that more likely how this would have occurred? And then it just crescendoed? Or could it yeah. have been, you know, he had a, a bad crouton at lunch? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's something no, just... it, it probably would have been building over days or even weeks, and it wouldn't necessarily have had to have been building for months, but something happened, something went wrong. It could be an organic problem in his head, and it it just gradually amplified, and then he built this delusion. Mm -hmm. Could have been that. And that's, that's what I'm wondering, especially with the comments that we heard about they're trying to kidnap my wife. That, yeah. that, that's the one, if, if that had not been made, I don't know where I'd be going on this, but that seems mm -hmm. to be interesting. Now, it also doesn't necessarily mean it's a delusion. Uh, I, I think right. we, we need to figure out, is there some legitimacy to this? Is there a reason why yeah. he's saying something of that nature? Because we've seen stranger things. Um, yeah. That That's something that I'm sure we're going to find out more about. The attorney saying it was uh, extreme emotional distress that he was under. I'm sure we'll find that out soon. But I mean, how does that read to you when they make a statement? Yeah, that there is some factor that we're not aware of. And I would guess that a conversation with uh, Sheriff at this point, that it would become clear. So hopefully it won't be too big of a mystery and whatever's going on, either the secret trafficking ring involving a judge or that, you know, the guy had a, a stroke or had had some kind of problem that affected his his brain organically that caused this. <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.